at Home Depot they sell these, and these are great because they got a handle, and you can load these things up, and they're usually not too heavy. You could also fill them with water if you had to go somewhere. Let's say your neighborhood doesn't have water, but seven blocks away does have water. Okay, maybe you take your little red flyer wagon, go up the street with three or four of these. Oh, well, there's an idea, huh? Um, and you go get. You know how much these weigh? These are heavier than hell full of water. Okay. Um, yeah, they're about 40 pounds. So anyway, this particular lid is a food grade lid that they sell at Home Depot. It goes with their four or five dollar bucket. This is like an eight dollar lid. And it's an airtight lid that seals down on top of this and it screws on, screws off. I mean, how simple is that? Um, and so for those supplies you were just talking about, um, you get two of these and four of these, or, or whatever it is quantity-wise you need, and those are the items that you're not using every day. They're just items that are just stuck in a corner of the garage, perhaps, that you can use them. Um, so as you go through this beginner progress sheet, checking things off, stuff is probably going to end up in this one and this one. As you get your food stuffs together, you got that. You may decide how you're going to transfer water around, what kind of containers you're going to use for water. We were talking about water containers uh, earlier tonight before most of you guys had arrived. Um, there's all kinds of choices in water. I mean, I, I started with Arrowhead water, the five-gallon jugs. If they knew how many water jugs I had, I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> but uh, I cycle through them every year, or every I go through them. I get the oldest ones. I use those first. Um, those are good containers. I mean, you buy little plastic containers at any store, mm -hmm. um, and then they make the big 55-gallon drums, uh, you know, like an oil barrel, but it's nice plastic that's supposed to be pretty good for water, drinking water, um, you know, the BPA, whatever that is, protected kind of thing. And they make 30-gallon ones, 15-gallon ones, 5-gallon ones, so that, you know, maybe you ain't moving a 55-gallon one, for example. If you had decided you were going to move somewhere else, that one ain't moving. Okay, it comes with a pump, a little cheap pump, and you can pump the water out. But you know, you maybe have uh, a couple sources of water, and this is not water that you're going to be drinking every day. It's water that, for something happened, you can get by it. Maybe you decide you want to filter the water because now you've looked at that checklist number two, which you didn't get passed out yet, and you can clean your water if it got a little old after a couple years, for example. I can tell you those Arrowhead bottles, I've got some of them that I think are four years old. And they still, no, no out aftertaste or anything wrong with them. Yeah. They're airtight I mean, how are you sealed. you securing them? I mean, well, like uh, closing them up, like corks or something? Well, no, they come they sealed come already sealed. with their plastic oh, cap. Oh, I that's see. Off. I thought you said you were cycling. You're cycling well, no, I, I cycle them. through them by uh, sending, you know, I use that water, give the oil, the arrowhead man comes, picks up my empties, and I got two new ones. I take a big magic marker, write the date I got it, so I can at least keep track of. That's something you really want to do on any of these food items and water items, is you want to put dates that you can read them. <coughs> and if you're like me, you can't read them without your glasses. <laughs> and if after an earthquake you can't find your glasses, you might want to use a big black magic marker that puts the date down how old it is. Uh, Brett. All right. So when you're in your organizational process, don't put everything in the garage. Put some stuff in the garage and put some stuff in your kitchen or put some stuff in your bedroom closet. Because if the garage falls over, you can't get to your stuff. If it's in the basement, you can't get to your stuff. You're going to need something in the meantime. So think about that as well. That's, you know, that's just, just you, know, you have to think about all the possibilities. So don't put all your eggs in one location. Because they're going to break no matter where they are. What about cycling through the food? Uh, you know. Well, you do want to cycle through the food. We've talked about that in some of the earlier meetings. That you know, that's why the dates on them. Because you know, from the grocery store, the can will come with a little stamp on it that yeah. you can't read, but it'll say, you know, it's good till 2017. Well, that's when they stop selling it. Yeah, we have Doesn't to put our bad. glasses in our bug out bag too. Yeah, there you go. That's very good. Uh, case, protective case. Extra, I do too. Extra glasses, you know. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. You know, medicine. You can start getting into medicines. What do you need? 
you know, vitamins or whatever other goodies you need. That, that enters into a whole other series of lists. Uh, and it can get, right now we just want to work on gradients. We, we're starting with the food one because that's what Clearwater did. Um, but you want to have the water immediately as well. Uh, some water, and the general theory is you need a minimum of a gallon of water per person per day. That's the minimum. And, uh, you know, you go through two gallons pretty easy, and if you've never practiced using a gallon of water, you are going to be very surprised really quick how fast water goes. Um, we turn the tap on, and it runs in the sink for who knows how long, you know. And that's only if you're cooking a hot dog, okay? So, you know, we have no idea. If you've gone camping or backpacking, now you start to get an appreciation for water because either you're having to go lug it from the lake or the stream. Well, wait a minute. I don't know where any lakes and streams are around here. So, there, you know, it's, that's something to be real concerned about is how would you conserve water? Well, we're not getting into that tonight. But that's a definite consideration. But, you know, okay, that, you know, 30-minute shower, I think that's out of the question. Um, so you got a 55-gallon drum. You need a gallon per day per person. There's 10 people at your house. Five days. Yeah. Just to drink. Huggies. Yeah. <coughs> Huggies. Huggies. Yeah. The alcohol. Oh, yeah, the wipes. Yeah. Yeah, those are good things to have. I mean, these are scented ones. Yep. You put a little bit of water in the bottom, it keeps it you know, alive for a long time. Yeah. I we take those. I, I've done a lot of camping and backing. That's very helpful for learning this stuff. Uh, you get an idea yeah. uh, of what you need to get by for you know like camping for three days and you go home. Thank God. But no, it's not that way. It might be tough in that. Um, all right, so I've kind of gone over just real quickly these two lists. Now, does anyone have any questions they want to ask about the lists or the progress sheet, which is something we, I just, again, like I say, I want people to start checking things off because they did it. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have some suggestions on survival foods, uh, where to buy them? I know Costco sells them, but I don't know how good they are and what other things are added in that one may not want to have. Well, here's, the, here's my thought on that. I, I've done a lot of camping and backpacking, and I never get any of this high-tech food. Survival. I don't get it. I never have. Okay, I did once, twice when I was real young. But I go to, they used to go to Safeway. That was Northern California. Okay? Just get goods that aren't heavy that you want to carry in a backpack that lasts for a while. I mean, you know, whether it's canned goods or, or grains or, you know, my family, we like rice or roni, okay? So, I mean, you can go a long way with just basic foods that, that aren't exotic or expensive. But, yes, you can go get the stuff that lasts for 50 years or whatever, <laughs> Lord help me. But well, you, there are those products that are available, and they're packaged up. Everybody on, if you go online right now and you just put in, uh, like, MREs, which is meals <coughs> ready to eat, oh, you, will get, uh, you will get more damn things and, and, oh, God, knock yourself out. And, you know, I even have some of this stuff that, you know, 10 years shelf life. I, that's not my first goal. Now, I'm not planning on backpacking out of my house. I'm not planning on that. I've got four kids in the Sea Org. I'm not going anywhere. At least that's what my wife tells me. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be at home. And everything I got, I don't care about weight. So... You don't have to go real high tech. Now, maybe you're going to be more mobile, and your plan is you're going to go to a place in Nevada where your your family is. So, and okay, maybe you need a different set of stuff to take with you. You need a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Mountain House is one good brand. Yeah. Freeze dry, very lightweight. Yep. Yeah. You just add water. Yeah. Is it? But very expensive. What is Mountain House, House is a brand that's been around oh, since yeah. the 70s at least. Yeah. And they're one that's of the good. most known freeze-dried foods that, <clears throat> you know, okay, Chili Mac, that was I think my favorite one or something like that. The, like when we that. go camping, it's, it's, it's just got everything in it and all you do is put, you, if it comes in a foil pouch, you open the top and you pour the hot water in. <laughs> and it turns into this whole meal right there and it's good. Uh, and it don't weigh nothing because it's been dehydrated, freeze-dried. Mm -hmm. 
these kind of expensive needles, but uh, they don't, like if you want something that lasts for a long time, I don't know the shelf life on those, for example, but uh, it doesn't ten, weigh anything and it's condensed years. down. More than 10 years. Yeah, the starter yeah. kit. Yeah. Like a little pail this big? Yeah. It's just got all those in it? If like you, 60 or 70 bucks. It, they're like in containers, square yeah. containers it's like this, it's square. But if you go online, you'll find all kinds of stuff. But I, I just wanted to say, you don't have to go total exotic on this to at least get two weeks, I mean, two weeks supply. Campbell's soup. Yeah, I mean, those kind of things are pretty easy. And okay, you're not eating a four course meal every night. Okay, fine. The fact that you're eating is better. See, I think I've, I've been researching some of that, and some of the best stuff, I think, is like the canned soup, I mean, the, the packaged soup, where you just add hot water. The Lipton soups and... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, and get jerky, and I mean, it's not heavy stuff if you're going to have to carry it in a backpack. Yeah, and remember, this is not necessarily the stuff that goes in here that you're going to be eating every day. This is not your regular food. Like, so we might be real concerned about uh, health conscious and stuff like that. Um, and that's a good idea, and, and if you're really at that gradient that you can make sure everything you have is totally chemical free and, you know, perfect for what you want. But w the stuff that's really in here is to get by for the next two weeks when there's nothing, okay? And then if it goes from two weeks, you might be looking at three months. That, that's your next gradient. Maybe you start looking that way. What can I get for three months? But boy, before the food runs out, it's going to be water. Yeah. Okay, I'm always harping about water because down here in Southern California, we are not like clear water or back east where there's a stream around every hill. So water is a major concern. Now, if you can find water, like we can go to the Tunga Wash and get water. No, there's more diapers in Tunga Wash than anything else. <laughs> um, so, if you're going to get water out of Tunga Wash, you better know how to clean that water. So that's a subject, another subject to get into. But that does run basically year-round. Um, and there's water in there. And one thing you can put in the, uh, the kit is, is the water filter. They have these high-tech water filters now that you just pour the water in and it, it comes out. Exactly. And, you know. We've got a few more minutes left here, but I, I've got a couple I brought in some of these pump water filters. I think you said you've got one, Caroline. Yeah. Um, here is a neat one made by Berkeley, which you guys, a lot of you probably have seen. This is the, a plastic food grade bucket version of their filter system, which I don't have to put together right now. But one sits on top of the other. It's got a lid, it's got a spigot, it's got inside, it's got a couple carbon blocks filters that you pour water in this side and it drips down through the filters in this side and the spigot comes out here and it's all inside this and we've tested this before. This is a very cheap version of a good water filter system and it's gravity fed. You pour it in the top bucket and it just gravity sinks down to the bottom bucket. And, and uh, well, uh, if you go online and you look at water filters, these guys will show up in most of the, the searches and it's Berkeley, I think is what Berkey. it is. Berkey. Berkey. I think it's Berkey. 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 Yeah, there is. And they make them out of stainless steel, which are nice. But they All different cost, sizes. you know, different sizes. Big ones, little ones, they're more expensive than stainless steel. I got this one just to see what a cheap one would be like. It's got the same filters. Exact same filters. Nothing different. How much was it? You can buy the filter. I think that was like about 80 bucks or something. I think the other ones are about 300 bucks. Yeah, and, and they go up and they go down from there, price-wise, depending on how big and fancy you get. And they all have charcoal filters. Well, they, they, uh, I have one set of filters that are a ceramic type filter, okay? And then I have another set of filters that are these, uh, the Berkeley ones that are, uh, I don't know if I've got them in here right now. Let's see. Yeah, that must be. The filters come with the kit that you buy. When you buy it, it's a whole kit, and it, you know, you want to try it and set it up, and you actually prime these filters. There's a way to prime them so they actually, the water flows through them better. We actually found that out one of our earlier meetings when it didn't work very well, and then someone decided to read the instructions, and uh, it worked better after that. Um, so you want to, you know, on any of these things, you want to actually kind of test them, too, to, to see that they work, you know, that the little, Dave, like you're talking about, the little filters like that, whatever, you yeah. want to achieve that they work. Um, to make them, you know that you have a workable unit. 
and you want probably several different types of units eventually, rather than just one, because if that one broke, oh Jesus. There's a variety of them on checklist number two. Yeah, there is. A of sources too. Yeah. <coughs> but the Berkey filters are good for like 70,000 gallons. Yeah, really I mean, long they, time. They, they, they wear remove out, most they stuff. For, you, mean, yeah. you will probably wear out the valve before you have to <laughs> replace the filter. There yeah. are some filters which will filter even the smallest terms. I mean, you, B -E -R -K -E. You put, they usually all will, will have a chart saying down. what they right. cover and what they don't cover. I mean, I don't any of them take out nuclear waste, uh, but uh, <laughs> that's not what we're talking about here. I was talking about the damn diapers and the tongue of wash. Yeah. So you had a question. Yeah, like, like with the most of the emergency food, you either have to heat it or you have to add hot water. So you're definitely going to need a heat source, but you're always going to need enough gas Check or whatever it is. number three. Yeah. But say you don't, say you don't have that, that's a problem, you're in your car, you know, that's something in your car. Any good suggestions on... There's food bars. On, yeah, food that's ready to eat, like just... Right. And I, again, when you go to Trader Joe's, I'm sure you could fill that list out right there just going to Trader Joe's, okay? Um, but it's, you know, you want things that you're not going to cook, okay? Uh, you get, you have the food bars, you have uh, whatever it is you might... Tuna. Cans of tuna. Cheese seeds are very healthy. What's that? Yeah, and then uh, coconut cream, mixed nuts. Uh, trail mix. <laughs> yeah, there we have. We'll go into these other checklists as the, the next meeting goes on. We're going to move into some of the other checklists and go over those items. Do a demonstration of water filters. Do a demonstrations on. We were t earlier tonight we had a meeting with the execs of our group, and we we're talking about these different meetings coming up, and we'll be going over those things. The cooking sources. Mm -hmm. um, I think they talk about having three different cooking sources. <coughs> well. That, if you've ever done any kind of camping or backpacking, that's not a big deal. If you've never done that, it could be a major hurdle that you want to learn something about. And that's why we're doing this, so you can get some stuff you know, some stuff you don't know. Um, you had a question. I was just going to say that uh, one of the things that you could do is uh, fermented foods. You yeah. know, like sauerkraut, pickling, that stuff lasts for camper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my wife actually has a store where she lessons and she used to teach lessons at Holtby uh, about pickling things because it'll last forever. Okay, that you know. that you come under now right <laughs> here. This is where you are, okay? Uh -huh. And your wife. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good point. And and that's the kind of help that we need, you know, filling out ideas on those things. Um, was it Trissy talking about uh, sprouting? Sprouting mm -hmm. yeah. grains yeah. And, and foods. I mean I, yesterday I got a sandwich of sprouts. Mm -hmm. um, but sandwich of what? With sprouts on it, yeah. you yeah. know. Sprouts. And, and but sprouts are something that were very popular. I remember years ago, and yeah. it does not seem to see it as much as we do. But that's an easy way to get a good source of food. Yeah, because seeds last forever. You yeah. Know, you, then all you have to do is just sprout them, and there you've got vegetables. Right, and if it's a long-term kind of scenario, and bonds ain't opening, well, there you go. We get some greenery. They have these um, things. I was at a trade show uh, last month. It's a uh, it's the tower garden. It's like a PVC pipe that's maybe like this. It's all hydroponics with the air, not even the water, the air, and it grows massive amounts of vegetables. It's, you know, it's really interesting. I mean, you can put that in. Well, you can get one and test it for I us, will, and then I we will. would like to see it. But it's like, a, but yeah, it's like, that could be cheap to make. Yeah, they have cheap. Like, what, what they can? Yeah. What it's called the tower garden. garden. Or a tower garden. It's like a big PVC pipe, and it has little holes like a but the, the, it grows on air, actually, not even water. Wow. And they have basil and lettuce, and I mean, you can grow all your stuff. Now, for the, the three-day scenario or the two-week scenario, it's not going to be very practical, but this may be something you want to have going anyway right. for yeah. a longer-term basis and maybe just enjoy doing it as well. I, I talked one meeting we had here. I can't grow anything in my backyard. It just won't grow, so I need some other system. Yeah. And that I'll might be a very there. good way to... To, to grow something if you want to grow something. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, seeds may last a long time to eat, but the German rate, germination rate of them drops down uh, dramatically uh, yeah. after time. Oh, like yeah. after a year or two, they, they may not germinate at okay. all. And then uh, I had a question regarding fermented foods. Uh, once you open them and expose them to air, 
Uh, can you keep them for uh, a few days or a week, oh, or yeah, do you have to last. use it right away? Yeah, I mean, they'll last for a pretty good well, long time. Because I had an open jar fridge. in the fridge. Yeah, if it's fridge, if it's refrigerated, it'll last for like a year. Oh, yeah, even though I opened it? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, and then having a refrigerator. Yeah, might but be if you a, have a refrigerator, yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. might be an issue. So, you know, always, you know, when your food stocks, you know, I'm not telling you to get, you know, 15 gallons of milk, okay? <laughs> it may not work too well for you. Yeah, if you're, if you're canning and you want to keep them for longer storage before you open them, and, you know, and you don't have, you know you're not going to have refrigeration, then just, you know, when you seal them, seal them in smaller sizes. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I sent you, I th uh, came across a solar powered <coughs> refrigerator. I think I sent you the site on that. Oh, I but did there, too. There's yeah. one, it's like super refrigerator, and it actually is a high quality refrigerator. It can work off regular electric, or you can put a solar panel out and it'll run it. Because mm -hmm. I know that's one thing we always talk about. Oh, when power goes out, our refrigerators are gone. So this handles that. If someone's going to buy a new refrigerator, to look into it. I think yeah. if you look up super refrigerator, or sciencesolutions.com, I think, is the company out of the Midwest. Wow. Yeah, because refrigerator so generally power. takes a lot of power um, yeah. to run. So and there's our electrician. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, huh. Going back a couple of generations ago or so when I was a kid, we had an ice <coughs> box, and uh, we put big ice blocks in the fridge, and that would last for a week and keep it cool. And uh, even right now, in my, my refrigerator, I have a big uh, pot that's frozen solid so that if the fridge goes out, uh, that's going to last, at least carry me through for a few days so I can extend the oh, life of the good food. idea. Well, you know, like your old soda bottles, the big, quart, you know, big uh, half-gallon soda bottles or whatever gallon ones, you can fill those with water and put them in the freezer, deep freeze, or your freezer, and if you got room, at least maybe it'll keep some things cold in the ice chest when you, you know, the ice will go fast. There's just some little ideas you can do with if you've got the space to do it. We lived in Florida for a while, and during one of the uh, hurricanes, the power was out for several days, and I just happened to have a generator, and I supplied power to four of my neighbors, including ourselves. I had cords running all over the neighborhood <laughs> just to keep their refrigerators. Oh, that's good. A generator is good. Yeah, and that's for the short-term basis. The yeah. generator is a really good idea. I mean, you could, you know, it'd be nice to have the, when we have a pod location, they can be kind of an investment yeah. cost-wise. But the pod location, Neil's house has got a generator. Well, he's got solar, which is even better. But uh, to have a generator might not be a bad idea for the pods. Now, we haven't discussed really setting up group pods yet, but we want to start thinking about that. Like, if it turns into a longer thing, if you wanted to pair up with another family or something, how would you do that? Where it's going to be a little hard to do that after the fact. So somewhere down the line in all this organizing and planning, you may want to decide who you're going to pair up with uh, or three or four families pair up with to have a group. <coughs> and we've used this term pot. Uh, <coughs> yeah. You can get a map and put the... We've started, Neil started to do that already. Um, and so it's just, it's something that's coming here as we advance further along. Now we're going to be ending off here in a little